Alright, so in the last video we talked about where a function is increasing or decreasing. And just to summarize, right, this chart summarizes things. If the first derivative is positive or negative, then f is either decreasing or increasing, right? So positive, increasing, negative, decreasing. Similarly, if the second derivative is positive or negative, we have concave up or concave down on the interval. Good. And so you can see where the interval where your derivatives are positive or negative is going to be really important. All right, and so now um, we're going to continue on in our discussion. Uh, just as a reminder, what we did in 4.1, that was the local and global maxima and minima, global extrema. And we didn't really look for local extrema. We're going to do that in this section. In fact, we only looked at global extrema and we only looked where we had a closed interval. And so we had the closed interval method. And that was for for global extrema. And you remember what we did there. <coughs> there we found the critical points of a function, which is where the derivative is zero or not defined. And then we also uh, in a then we built a table of values. Uh, with the critical points and the endpoints, you plug all those points into your function and you look to see which one is biggest and smallest. So we're going to continue our discussion of uh, local extrema in this section and we're going to use our first and second derivatives to help. And so um, just as a quick example, right, if you have a graph like this for example, <clears throat> you see that we have like a local max there, local min there, local max there, local min there, right? Easy. Well, what you also see there is that the derivative is changing sign, right? Because this is where the derivative is zero. And so we have a local max, right? If the derivative is changing from positive to negative, we have a local min if the derivative is changing from negative to positive, right? And so that's going to be what we use to uh, figure out if we have a local extremum. So this is going to be the uh, first derivative test. The first derivative test for local extrema. And that is, <clears throat> if f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals c, then we have a local, what, max or min? Uh, it's going to be a uh, max at x equals c. Can you just read that? That's max. In case similarly then, if f prime changes from minus to plus, right, <clears throat> at x equals c, then we have a local min at x equals c. Good. Um, and so this this is a nice test for local extrema. Now you'll remember that uh, how do you find the local max or min? First you do use you compute the critical points, right? Those are the values at C. But just because the derivative is zero doesn't mean you have a local max or min, right? You could have just a plateau. And so that's really what this is getting at is we're trying to figure out if we have a plateau or if we have a local max or a local min. Good. By the way, in this picture, if I draw that picture again, and we have our critical points, could you use concavity to determine if a point is, whoops, concave, so can you use concavity to determine if you have a local max or min? Just from the graph, can you tell? Well, let x equals c be a critical point for f. 
critical point for f. Then, <coughs> um, if f double prime of c is greater than zero, then what can we say? Which can you see in the picture where we're at? Something like this, maybe, like this. Then we have a local min at x equals c. And then if f double prime of x is less than zero, so like for example here and here, right, then, oops, did I say c? I meant to say c there. Then we have a local max at x equals c. Okay, and so this is called the second derivative test. Oops, derivative test for local extrema. Good. Now, what happens if f double prime of c is equal to zero? Yeah, the test fails. We can't tell if the if we have a local max or a local min. It could be either one. Okay. And so now we have some information that we're going to use. We have a first derivative test for local extrema and a second derivative test for local extrema. And we're going to um, try out some examples to see how this all works. Okay. So let's try our first example here. Example. Uh, f of x equals x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. We want to find where f is increasing, decreasing, where f is increasing, where f is decreasing, where it's concave up or where it's concave down. <coughs> okay. And so in order to do that, we need to know the signs, S-I-G-N, of the uh, function. And so um, let's go ahead and write down our derivatives here. Our derivative would be 4x cubed minus 12x squared. And the second derivative, uh, 12x squared minus 24x, right? Now, in order to determine where things are positive or negative, <clears throat> we're going to build a sign chart. Remember those from chapter one? And this is the reason why we looked at them in chapter one. Uh, so off to the left here, we put down our factors. And so if I factor out my derivative, let's see, I need a, I have four, it can come out. X squared can come out. And then I'm left with uh, X minus three. Is that true? So my factors are 4x squared and an x minus 3. Okay, and so down below here we write down where our each factor is positive or each factor is 0. In this case we have x equals 0 and x equals 3. That separates the x coordinate into three regions. And then you can just plug in points for each region and see uh, if things, if each factor is positive or negative. So for example, if x is minus 1 in this region, this is going to be positive. Minus 1 minus 3 is negative, right? Then in this region, 4x squared, well 4x squared is always positive, so you can just fill that in. But then, and then x minus 3 doesn't change sign, right, until x equals 3. So if this was negative, it's going to continue to be negative, and then it changes sign at 3. Good. And so you see here that uh, in this region, f prime is going to be negative, and so f is decreasing. And same thing in this region, f prime is negative, so f is decreasing. And then in this region, f prime is positive, so f is increasing. Good. And so we also see that uh, 0 and 3 are critical points, right? And so uh, at x equals 0, does anything happen? 
but we go from decreasing to decreasing. So this is not a local extremum. Not a local extremum. What happens at x equals 3, we go from negative to positive, right? The derivative is going from negative to positive, and so therefore this is going to be a local min. Good. Uh, and then, <clears throat> so this actually tells us a lot about the shape of our function. Uh, before we leave this, let's go ahead and finish off our uh, chart here, 12x times uh, x minus 2. So I can put my 12x together there, and then my x minus 2. And then 0 is still a critical point. 2 is my new critical point for the second derivative. And then, so this is going to be negative, positive, positive, right? I'm just filling in the signs here. x minus 2 is negative here, and then change the sign at 2, so negative, positive. <clears throat> so here we have f double prime is positive, f double prime is negative, f double prime is positive. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good. And so at 0, we'll notice that the second derivative is 0. Right? And so, um, let's see, we also have at, F, at 2, the derivative is, second derivative is positive. And so here you can see, well, this is going to be concave up, concave down, concave up. Good. And so now we have increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. And can I use the second derivative test for my local extrema? Well, only 0 and 3 are candidates. If I look at x equals 3, I'm over here, right? And that's where my function is concave up. So concave up at a critical point means your critical point looks like that, right? And so this would be a local local min at x equals 3. And that's the second derivative test. Good. All right. So, um, yeah, that's how we use the sec first and second derivative tests to figure out where our function is increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. And we also tested for the local extrema. In this case, we just had uh, really just one point. Okay, in the next video, we'll take a look and uh, maybe we'll even try to sketch the function a little bit. All right, see you then.